The views and comments expressed on the following radio program by its hosts and their guests do not necessarily reflect the views of rmconair.com or its affiliates. Listener discretion is advised. Many mighty ships are sinking. Many stars are falling down. And I count it as a blessing. Just Sports with Sonny Wells. Good evening. This has been a tough week for me. <laughs> Can't wait to talk about it. Uh, man, I... I kind of don't know where to start, but let's jump right into it. Uh, let me see. We got baseball, uh, the two teams that are in that. San Francisco Giants and the Kansas City Royals. Royals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, good luck to them. Yeah. Um, that's it for that baseball thing, I guess. Uh, I'm trying to avoid what I know I'm going to have to talk about. You know, you want to say it's, the Lakers for last? Uh, it's coming that's, up too you fast. You know going to talk about it. It's coming up too fast. As a matter of fact, let's just roll a little something that we did last week so we can go right into that. Uh, is that good to do now, Chris, or you want us to talk? Lakers last. Lakers later. You want to do the Lakers last? Okay, the engineer says he wants to do the Lakers last. Um we talked about, uh, oh, the football, the, uh, the big trade that just happened. Yeah. Uh, Percy Harvey or, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Seattle traded to, to the uh, Jets. Jets. New York Jets. And that was a, a, all of a sudden type deal there. So something's going on behind the scenes there in Seattle you're absolutely to right. force him out like that, I would think. You no, know, you're absolutely right. So he, as a matter of fact, last year he, he had some injuries. Remember in the playoffs? Right. right. Uh, he didn't play in all, all the playoff games. And, uh, on top of that, there's definitely uh, some friction there between, of course, uh, Pete Carroll and uh, uh, otherwise uh, they, they would never have traded him because yeah. he was definitely an integral part of that team. But the same token as uh, previous weeks, he hasn't been really in the offense much. And yeah. He was definitely complaining uh, you know, to the powers to be that, hey, he wanted to be more involved in the offense. Yeah, and, I, I saw the the game, I, I think, not, not last week's game, but the game before that, right. uh, Receiver and Russell were – yeah. Having some exchange of, of words right there during the middle of the game there. So it tells you that the receivers are complaining about something or another there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the offensive of sets that they're running, they've been able to get away with uh, a lot of Russell Wilson ad living. Yeah. You know, in terms of, you know, running and br- when plays break down, you yes. just take off, you know, feet. But, you know, eventually that's going to catch up with you. Yeah. If you're trying to be a Super Bowl champion. Then from there you're gonna to have to you know run out of those plays and he's been very fortunate he hasn't really gotten really hit yeah you know, you know serious hits on him but uh, if he continues to run like that you know eventually it's it's uh, it's gonna catch up with him and the team is and the team is you can tell the team is not as sharp as, as you thought yeah. they would be yeah at, at, at this time of the year yeah, mm. mm-hmm. yeah we had, uh, same thing came through the shop where uh, the barbershop that is where uh, there was some friction with him. Yeah. And uh, I'm pretty sure Pete Carroll doesn't put up with any of that. Right, right. So they, it's like a cancer, and so you have to just cut it out. Yeah, So it yeah. doesn't uh, mess with it, yes. Super Bowl champs, and, you know, I guess he knows because that's how he got there. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like, okay, we'll see you later, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for having that that uh, run back during the uh, Super Bowl, but uh, we don't need you anymore. Yeah. Plus, we don't know if you're going to be able to play. Yeah. Well, the Jets are glad to get them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can say that uh, the Jets finally put together a nice game, even though they didn't win. They did. Yeah, you saw that uh, move that the referee put on. Uh, yeah, yeah. what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I, I certainly wasn't in favor of it. I, I definitely think that it made a difference if the referee would have tossed the flag, yeah. which I thought it was going to do. From there, I think it would have been a, a, the field goal that, that he attempted. I think that certainly it would have been closer. Uh, closer to him making it, I, I think that might have made a difference in the game. All in all, the, the Jets definitely put up uh, probably the best performance of the year, even though I know they beat the Raiders the first game of the season. Yeah. The Jets might have played the best game of the season. Yeah. But bottom line is it's still lost. So this new receiver, is he going to help him or what? Uh, probably so. Okay. Um, we were uh, – oh, how about those Cowboys? <laughs> Playing some ball. What can you say? Um, okay, you guys know that you, you guys are the experts in that. And I'm oh, not, is that because but I don't even know if I'm an expert <laughs> for what we got to go through today. Yeah. But um, Stephen, they said this morning that um, 
they're going to wear this guy out. Yeah, it's Marco uh, Murray. Yeah, he, he feels yeah. like, you know, he keeps running, and as soon as he goes down, the money goes down, the team goes down, because it's taking a lot of pressure off of Romo. Yeah. So what, what are your thoughts? Well, um, first of all, I say keep playing the guy, keep working him. Mm-hmm. You know, um, right now he's the second man in the history of the NFL to run six consecutive 100-yard games right behind Jim Brown. So that's impressive. Sure. So so uh, working. I mean, they have other running backs that they plan to use, although the the, the, the second string running back, I'm going to use that expression, got in trouble the other day. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Going, stealing some jaws or some turkey or some yeah. chicken or something. Well, yeah. <laughs> that was crazy. But just before the show here, I was looking at the size of the Dallas Cowboy linemen. Um, all of the tackles and guards weigh over 300 pounds. So we're giving DeMarco Murray that credit, but he's getting those open holes because they have a huge offensive line, even though a couple of their uh, key players uh, went down in injuries. Right. Uh, so that might make a difference we'll see this week. So let me get this right. They have built up their team. Yes. And uh, – from what they've picked, it shows now. It actually yes. shows. Yes. Because they were saying in the barbershop, like, these cats were uh, the size you were talking about, 300 pounds, but they're quick. Yeah. They're, that's not fat. That's right. That's that's mostly muscle. And, and they're young. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. I, I'm impressed because uh, for a couple of years, you know, going to the barbershop, you had to listen to, ah, I'm, uh, they're they're horrible. They're horrible. Do something different, and yeah. then all of a sudden, uh, you know, they they're they're really going at it. Um, what were you getting ready to tell me, Chris? Uh, I'm gonna give Smitty a round of applause for doing his homework. Oh, oh okay. Smitty, a round of applause. Okay. <laughs> yeah. How about those? As always. Words? As always. <laughs> so uh, let me see what happened. Let's 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 go over what happened last week. You ready to do that? Let's see what happened last week, and then I'll. Have to make my adjustments <laughs> back. Wait, who you got? Cowboys or Seahawks? Cowboys or Seahawks? I'm going with the Cowboys. Uh, they're in. They're 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 not at home. Cowboys are not at home. They're in Seahawk territory. I think so. Yeah, I'm going with the Seahawks. <laughs> they don't lose at home, Seattle. No, they don't. Yeah. No, and, and from what I understand, uh, Romo chokes. Yeah, yeah, but he chokes in the big, big games. We're talking about in the playoffs. This, this so right big, now, big, he's, he's big enough. He's balling. You know, he's one of the top quarterbacks in the league right now. Oh, he is. Yeah, he yards is. passes. So this is big he's enough been to choke for with. The last yes. several years. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, well, actually, I'm going for the Cowboys. I think the Cowboys are going to do it. Now. Yeah, we got to roll with the Cowboys now. <laughs> America's team, right? <laughs> yeah, like you, that for the last, you can hear them now. Uh, yeah. They win. How about those Cowboys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's go to break. We'll be right back right after our, right after our messages from uh, who we got? Pitbull? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. The historian was right. Uh, Smitty was right. And I was wrong. Okay. And I got a few more things that I was wrong on, too. And so we might as well just go ahead and play that, man. Just go ahead and play it, you know. Um, so the score will be at the end of the month. Like, are, are you allowing for any excuses of figuring out who they're playing with, or you kind of you're already to the point where they should they should know what they're doing better? No, I, I think they should have a pretty good idea of what we're doing on that end of the floor. And obviously, the, by, by the end of the month, I expect them to, to know exactly what we're doing. You know, so I have a little bit of a leeway here you know, right now. It's only you know a week, nine days, something like that that we've been going at it. You know? Yeah. Now you see that. Already, he has the solution. Yeah. And that's what I'm talking about with Byron Scott. He's already figured out what it is they need to do to be able to beat them. So that's why I said they're going to win on Sunday, hands down. He's made the adjustments already. He's in the press conference making the adjustments. Hey, what do you say about that? Do you, do you think the players from, are going to rise? Go ahead. Yeah, let's, let's, let's see what you got to say. Because you over there dogging me saying, nah, nah, nah. No, it's so not going to happen like that. You have to keep it real here, bro. Uh, number one. I don't think it's going to happen like that. Number two, I look at Byron Scott's track record. I, I know he took the New Jersey Nets to back-to-back championship mm-hmm. runs. I understand mm-hmm. that. But after that, I know he was a coach of the year in New Orleans, but he certainly wore, wore out his welcome there. He, he and, and I remember now, before Mike Brown, uh, before Mike Brown, I think uh, was a uh, coach by the name of Byron Scott, who coached the Cavaliers there, and he lost something like 20-something twenty some games. Now let's fast forward with that to the Los Angeles Lakers. I'm looking at the teams that he has right now. 
I'm looking at the so-called adjustments he's making. But but last I checked, I think Golden State scored was 120 points. You know, and on top of that, a lot of those shots they made with hands in their face. Now, if Golden State really wanted to put it down on the Lakers, I think they they would have popped that. I mean, they could have probably scored 140 on the so-called new and improved. <laughs> Yeah, Byron's got to have the plan, huh? Uh, yeah, well, no, I thought he had the plan. I was wrong. Let me publicly say that I made a boo-boo here okay. because, uh, for one, and I can see how I did because, for one, it's too early in the season. Yeah. The, the fatigue did not sit in. They're just coming off a training camp. They're in shape. As a matter of fact, they lost by 20. Then they lost by 40. Yeah. So... Uh, they do have a few people out, but I- I'm really puzzled now as to um, what they're going to be able to do. Uh, they just lost again to Utah by 30 last night. Yes. So, uh, and I haven't seen, I only saw a part of one game, and I haven't seen the other two games. I didn't want to see them, to tell you the truth, because I didn't feel like they were going to be able to make any type of adjustments, especially with personnel that uh, they need in there, out of there. Uh, it's just like you guys said. I don't think it's going to happen the way you're talking about. <laughs> I was really adamant about that. I, I really believed that even with the personnel that they had, yeah, they could do something. Yes. But, you know, they they don't have the scores that they need, obviously. Well, six of their key players, uh, players that they're counting on to uh, help the team are on the injured list. Uh What's his name? Um, right, that's, uh, that's part of, uh, of course, Swaggy P. Yeah, that's that's another one. That's good one. for 25. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, what's Kelly, the, the white boy? Yeah, Brian, Brian Kelly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, what's the other kid's like, name? They play, they Jeremy, take it to the whole. Jeremy Lin. Jeremy Lin. Well, Jeremy Lin, yeah, he's one. And then the other kid. 15. That uh, played la- last year. He would take it to the whole real strong dunk. He could shoot. Oh, his name was on the tip of my tongue, too. No. Oh, uh, he's on the tip of my tongue. Mm. Yeah, I can't think of his name I, I right know now. I talking about yeah. Yeah. You know what bugs me the most? Um, you know, years ago when I came out here, I wanted to play pro ball. But after I saw how strong they were and the political aspect of it, yeah, it's like, okay, I didn't, I'm not going in correctly, so it's, it's probably not going to work. But if you get a chance to get on a – Pro bench. That's an accomplishment. Well, not only is it is it an accomplishment, and you knew the right people, but I'm trying my best to do what I can to, first of all, stay there yeah. and help the team. I'm trying to make myself valuable to the team. Right. And I just don't understand why someone else in the mix on the team has risen up. I, I, I don't get it. Well, I'll say this, excuse me there. Um, you had a lot to say about Byron, mm-hmm. and it, I think it, it it warrants what you were talking about because watching Byron right now, I, I do have some concerns, not in a negative way, but I think just as he's filling out the players, you know, we as critics, fans, you know, we're filling out Byron Scott too. Uh, you know, for example, uh, he's kind of hard on the rookie right now, uh, Randall. Randall. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he uh, set him on the bench the, the last half of the game they played against Utah, and he, he's publicly saying that uh, he's slow, he's not uh, catching on fast enough. You know, and, and he recognized the kid's only 19 years old. But uh, also, I'm wondering about um, uh, Nash. You know, why in the world would they pick a 40-year-old point guard, even though they had the contract and all this money, and say he's going to be the starter of the Los Angeles Lakers in this day and age? Uh, he, you know, fortunately, he, he injured himself. So, uh, you know, I, 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 and Price got a chance to play, and, and they look a little better, you know, on the offense. So, but, but again, uh, Byron has this thing about not shooting threes. That's the point that I was trying to get to. And they had a poll out this morning, and the fans say they seventy eight percent of them would prefer to see more three point shots. Uh, you know, not taken. like Dan Tony. No, not like the Dan Tony. Yeah, but 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 certainly more than what 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 the short. I mean, he's focusing so much on defense, defense, yeah. defense. I mean, defense is definitely important. Yes, we understand that. But 
But like you said, Smitty, I mean, it's almost like he's he's acting like he's not even taking advantage of the three-point line. I mean, yeah. uh, definitely most teams out there utilize that as the integral part of their offense. And Byron Scott is acting like uh, he's the one to deal with. Yeah. Now, Sonny, you play ball. What does it do to a player's uh, head when the coach – takes away a weapon, and, and I'm saying that the players all know that they're not supposed to shoot three-point shots. What does that do to their psyche? Uh, right now, what's going through my head is um, have I picked the wrong coach to really like? Okay. <laughs> no, really. Wait a minute. Because, Wait hold a minute. on, hold on. Let me, let me explain myself. Got there. It, no, you know, yes, with, his, with his success, I, I figured that he would be uh, a very good at what he's doing here. But to hear him say something about not being able to shoot the three pointers, and that's all he could do. <laughs> oh, you got a point there. Huh? He know he knows the value of a three point shot. Yeah, they they relied on him for yeah. a lot of those shots. Yeah, when nothing was could come inside. Right. So I I don't understand his philosophy right now. He wants to try and mold and shape the team, and 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 I guess he wants scoring. Interior yes, first, inside and, out, and then yeah, because you aren't supposed to go inside out. Yes, right. So I, that's the only thing I can think of that is, is fundamental. Yeah, in his thought pattern. Yeah, uh, but I, you, the game now. I coach at Lawndale. Yeah, I tell those guards if it's open, shoot the ball. Yeah, you have to shoot the ball to keep the defense yes. honest. Right. Yes, yes. Now if you come in there and you don't shoot the ball, then they just pack it in. Right. And you can't make any passes in there. Right. Even if the floor is spread, you know, that that outside shot now is 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 pertinent to the game. Yeah. It is it, it ha is a threat. Yes. You have to be a threat out there. And if you're not a threat, oh don't worry, they won't shoot it. And if they do shoot it, they're not gonna make it because they don't regularly shoot it. Now obviously uh Golden State has the green light to shoot threes. Right. And you see the proficiency that comes along with it. So that's what my point. What is he going to do? This is the, you know. Is this he is taking problem. away the proficiency? This is a problem. Yeah. Because when what, when Shaggy P comes back, he going to tell him not to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> this is a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I that's, talked all that mess point. last week, and now he we back, come back here and analyze this. Yeah. This is a problem. Yeah. And maybe he'll let off once the season starts, but uh, maybe he's just trying to put a, a discipline in. Right. Right now. Right now, I am yeah. not feeling him. Well, I am not feeling it. Yeah. Either made me look stupid on the show. <laughs> I got the experts down here. I'm glad y'all ain't clown me too bad, but you know what? Let's go to break. Pitbull, our sponsors. We'll be right back. Hey, are you tired of those same old energy drinks with bad taste? Make a switch to Pitbull Energy Drink with a guaranteed no aftertaste. Pitbull offers more energy with ginseng and vitamins B6 and B12. With a ginger ale, lemon lime flavor, Pitbull meets the consumer's demand for better tasting and healthier energy products with a guaranteed no aftertaste. Make a switch to Pitbull Energy Drink. Pitbull offers more energy with ginseng and vitamins B6 and B12. With a ginger ale, lemon lime flavor, Pitbull meets the consumer's demand for better tasting and healthier energy products. For more information on Pitbull energy drinks, bars, and mixes, visit their website at hiphopbev.com. That's hiphopbev.com. Online orders available at hiphopbev.com. What's your style? Curly, straight, wavy, or maybe you like it natural. Introducing Secret Styling Hair Care Products by Smith Products Company, LLC. A complete line of hair moisturizers, shampoos, conditioners, and an assortment of other hair styling aids formulated for today's fashion-conscious consumer. Enhance your style. Get the secret. Okay, we're back. Just Sports, Sunny Wells, uh, Smitty, and uh, Pierre. We're here. Uh, we got a clip that we want to run here. Uh, but first, uh, Pierre, your thoughts? Uh, yes, I, I'm, I'm going to say a couple of things, fellas. Hopefully you guys don't run me out of the studio here. I, I just <laughs> uh, want to keep it honest and keep it real. Uh, what Personally, what I would do, I would fire Byron Scott and I would trade Kobe Bryant. Wow. Right wow. There. Listen to right, this right, Joe Manning. Hey, right Pierre. there. Fire Byron Scott, trade Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant is probably untradeable because of his contract. Ooh, if, I if, wasn't if, expecting that. Right, right. <laughs> and if you could hey, do that. Ace Smitty ducked the lightning most. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Did you say you were a Laker fan or what? Oh, uh, a- a- actually, I'm, I'm not a Laker fan, but the same token, I try to be a, uh, you know, just an honest observer of, okay. of, uh, of, of the game and uh, all the teams. And uh, yeah, that's that's what I would do first. I know you just hired Byron Scott, but he's certainly the wrong man for the job. I think I, I said that last week. I'll certainly uh, reiterate that. For a lot of different reasons, you don't even have enough time for me to go into all of it right now. <laughs> but but that's for Byron Scott. You pulling the Mike Brown situation, on my <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Second, se- se- second of all, uh, obviously, look how long it took for the Lakers to actually turn over the reins to Byron Scott. He was definitely fourth or fifth choice at the minimum. I mean, they interviewed him like three or four times. I mean, it's like look how long it took for them to actually give him the job. If they really, if they really thought he was the right man for the job initially, they would have gave it to him right after Dan Tony. Remember, Dan Tony actually resigned. The Lakers didn't fire him. He was actually resigned. He wanted an extension on his contract, and the Lakers wouldn't give him an extension. The Lakers were okay with him coaching this year. But he decided that if he didn't get the extension, the security he was looking for, he decided to leave. So he left on his own. It wasn't like the Lakers initially fired him. Okay, and and then uh, so far as Kobe Bryant, yeah, I think his days is his days are numbered. It's time to be. He plays no defense. I mean, he takes a lot of bad shots, and I can't wait to see what's going to happen when the Lakers have an extended losing streak. But wait a minute now. We're, we're three games in the season. Ended losing. Three games into the preseason. <laughs> he's coming back from an injury. And we, we got to give him a little more time. We, 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 okay. Okay. I appreciate your point, yes, sir. general manager. <laughs> Fire Kobe. Get him a trade. Get him Kobe. out of there. <laughs> Put the basketball Fire guys. Fire Scott and trade Kobe yeah. if you can. But he's untradeable because of that contract. The, the basketball guys come going to come get you tonight, <laughs> man. <laughs> but uh, well, you know, let's, let's take a look at a clip that we had. And... Uh, See what Mr. Scott's talking about. Kobe? Okay, let's do the Kobe interview. Yeah. Kobe on the outside again. Just a horrible shooting night. And his last game, three for 13, arises and fires. And we'll show Kobe using that screen from Jordan Hill. The big, late stepping out. Doesn't want to get beat off the dribble. So he gives Kobe that fluid, in rhythm jump shot. And the rest is history. Explosion and the acceleration that he used to have. We've seen a lot of this in the key. Oh, it's a good fake by Brian. Out of it goes. It goes. And Kobe will. And to see if he can complete the three-point play. Too tempting to stay down. Hood goes up, comes down. We've got a five. Offensive rebound and put back. Brian got it. Kobe, look, it's with five and a half to go here in the first half of exhibition game number four. Bryant knocks it down to beat. Back at the former Butler University star goes around him. Good pass. Great pass. And Boozer finishes. Lakers, on the other hand, average 103 just out of the top 10. Boozer has got two in a row. One inside, one outside. Kobe's got the rebound, settles into his hand. Well, no look under the Boozer. Count it, foul. Kobe, yes. Recognizing that Boozer has great position, just throw it into him. And the foul and one. This will be Boozer's first free throw attempt of the night. And that's something that. On two. Bad pass by Ronnie Price, but it goes to Kobe, who cleans it up and scores. That's the second team foul on the Lakers here in quarter number three. Ronnie Price got away with one there in the pass. He tried off. 15 minutes, 11 points. By far his best showing in the early preseason for the Utah Jazz. Kobe, turn around, jump shot. Boy, we've seen a lot Yeah, we're back, uh, Just Sports here, watching a few clips. I said interview, but it was actually a clip. Um, man, Kobe had 27 in this, right? And that's too much. When you say too much, what do you mean? We, we understand how Kobe plays. Um, he, he's coming back. He does have to get his game legs under him. Um, but where is the rest of the team? Yeah. You know, he, if, 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 if I'm coaching the team, and, you know, and I do do some coaching now, I'm not trying to take my star player who is an elderly person and wear him out. I'm not trying to wear him out. Yeah, I know he gets paid big bucks, but I'm just not trying to do that. In the preseason? Down by 40 points? Yeah, well, what are you doing? Let's just sit quarter. down and chill, right. you know? Uh, it, I have to question Byron Scott's motives at this point. 
I don't know if I find him, but I sure. <laughs> you know, I, it's like baseball. I have to go out and talk to him. Hey, look, man, what, what are you really doing here? <laughs> what are your actual thoughts about what's going on? Your modus operandi. What, what's going on? I don't yeah. get it. So, and the other thing, don't shoot no threes. Yeah. Like we were talking about before the break. Yeah. That makes no sense, especially from someone who always shot the threes. Yeah, that's a very good point. You know, he, he would either take it inside, jump up and dunk it on you, yeah. or he would light you up out there. Right. And that was his role. Right. So how, why hasn't he devised more roles for other people? You know, in a short period of time, when you're a, a basketball player, if you don't have a shot, or if your shot is off, you can spend a week, two weeks, two or three hundred jumpers, sets of 25, yeah. and you'll become proficient. Well, this, this is my problem I have with pro players, period. They make all this money, they have the whole summer off, and then they come back and they're clinging their shots. I don't understand it. You know, uh, when you think about uh, a Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, those men worked in the off season perfecting their shots. And when they came back, you saw the improvement. But then you watch uh, Wesley Johnson come back and he can't make a three-point shot consistently. You know, when he knows that the team is going to need that shot. I don't. I don't understand these professional players. Yeah, they're they're not consummate professionals as we know them. Like I'm sure you do from from past times. In the summer league years ago, it used to be at Loyola Marymount. You could come out and see Magic play. Yeah. Mark Aguirre, um, uh, the other little guy, the little guard who was out there limping and play. Uh, Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas. These guys are playing in the summer league, and they're the top guys in the NBA working on their game. Exactly. You know, these guys just don't do that now. And, and if they do, it's very limited. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I don't think their diets are the greatest. Um, and why are they getting injured so much? I know the level is high. Yeah. And you have to have a lot of strength. But when you go through, and those guys that are training them, they're very good. Yeah. Right. You do the work, you're going to get strong. Right. You know? Um, Smitty and I were talking earlier, and we talked about uh, uh, um, the boy from Inglewood. Yeah. And he went out and got Paul him. Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce. We went out and got him a, a, a nutritionist, a, um, a st- strength and conditioning person, um, a chef, and he's still playing. Yeah. As a matter of fact, when they knifed him up at the club in Boston, <laughs> you, remember, you remember that? Yeah. He survived because he was in great physical condition. <laughs> you know? Right. But, uh, hey, uh, final thoughts, Smitty? I'll pass it on to Pierre. Yeah, go ahead, Pierre. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, so I, I just think that the Lakers are in for uh, a very long season. It's going to be a season of major turmoil. Uh, I don't see Kobe Bryant. And you, you call me crazy about uh, thinking the Lakers really need to trade him. But when Kobe gets frustrated, I mean, it, it's, it, it's really going to make the matters much worse. Remember, it was a few years ago, a little bit more than a few years ago, when he was to that point before, he said he'd rather play on a planet Pluto than to play for the Lakers. <laughs> planet Pluto. Pluto than play for the Lakers. You know, he was calling everyone out, including the owner at the time. Who was Dr. Buss? You know, so when he gets to that point, he's gonna start ball hogging as usual, and the Lakers are not gonna go anywhere. And next thing you know, they're gonna have to rebuild a couple of years anyway. And that's why I say they need to start the process sooner than later. Byron Scott's the wrong man for the job, but he's going the other direction with that as well. Yeah, I, I think um, we just have to wait and see. Um, yeah, I'm baffled right now. I, I, I thought I knew. I, I, I had the faith. <laughs> you know, because faith without works is dead. But I, I had the faith, and they just didn't do the work. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know, see what the teamwork's like. You know, teamwork makes the dream work. All right, sounds good to me. Okay, just sports. Big ups to um, uh, Mr. Johnny Morris, uh, Crystal Davis Wells, Executive Director, and uh, Roscoe's Chicken and Waffle. Thanks, fellas. We'll see you next week. Out of here. Say, 